When you are making a sandwich, it's much easier to buy pre-made sliced bread from the store. Rather, bake it on your own from scratch. Frameworks are like sliced bread. They speed up the process. In software development, frameworks help to boost the performance and extend capabilities and offer libraries for the developers to focus on the primary features rather the low-level operations. Services Plus is built on top of such framework and that framework is upgraded with our new version. Before we move on and see about the framework, we need to learn the architecture of Services Plus. Services Plus consists of multiple components. It has a Tomcat web server through which the users can access the web pages through the HTTP protocol and then comes the application layer. Say for example, an user logging into the application. We need to show up the data whatever is supposed to and he needs to have the permissions as per the settings we have done. And that particular logic is handled in the application layer. So the application layer consists of a JBoss application server. On top of it, we have our own proprietary framework called Mickey. Our developers work on top of this Mickey framework layer to build new features for Services Plus. And now let's quickly see what are all the different services offered by the JBoss application server. The first service is the thread pool. Say we have multiple operations running in the application in the background and each operation will have its own thread. Say for example, we have the mail fetching thread which is responsible for fetching emails from the mail server on a periodic basis and that's being handled by the thread pool which is the service of JBoss. And the second service offered by the JBoss web server is the logger. Say we have multiple operations happening at a single point of time, but we cannot have all operations to open up a physical file to write the logs. And that is being handled by the logger, which is again a service of JBoss. The third one is the database connection pool. Say for example, we have multiple users accessing the application and doing multiple operations. And for each operation, there should be something which has to be done on the database. We cannot establish a separate connection for each operation and it's very costly. So that's being handled effectively using the database connection pool. Though we have good services offered by JBoss, there are some challenges. So the first challenge is the JBoss is very heavy. It has a lot of components that need to be loaded and that makes the application big and sometimes it might slow down the application's performance. The second challenge we have with JBoss is the time-consuming system upgrades. Say for example, the Tomcat web server will release new builds in a periodic basis and those builds will contain new features and the security fixes. And due to the work involved in integrating the new builds, it is always a time-consuming task for us in bringing in the new version of the Tomcat web server. The third challenge we had was the slow start. Since the JBoss is responsible for starting the application, since it has multiple components in it, it really took a little longer to start the application. In order to overcome these challenges, we have come up with the upgrade of the Mickey framework to the Mickey Lite. So we have cut down the dependency of the JBoss application server in the Mickey Lite. And also, we have got the services better than JBoss built inside Mickey Lite framework. Alright, now let's quickly see what are all the advantages we would get by using this Mickey Lite framework. And unlike the previous framework, Mickey Lite is very light. It doesn't have the components that are all not required. And the system upgrades will be more simpler since it doesn't have the dependency with the other components. So it's just a kind of a plug and play. And then the thread handling is better in Mickey Lite. Say we have multiple operations happening and there will be a thread for each operation. And this thread handling is made better using Mickey Lite. Then, the multi helpless feature is one of the most requested features in Service Plus. And due to the limitations in the Mickey framework, we couldn't 
bring in that particular enhancement. But once this Mickey light is available, it's easy for us to quickly build this feature. The next advantage we get through this Mickey light framework upgrade is maintainability. So we have segregated the log files, the configuration files, the translation files into separate folder for easy maintenance. And now let's quickly see how the folders and files are organized in the new Mickey light. Whenever we get reported with an issue after the upgrade, the first thing we ask to do is rename the extracted folder. And that's the folder wherein the application files are deployed. So when you rename the extracted folder and restart the application, all the application files would be redeployed again into the extracted folder. And this particular model is changed in Mickey Light. In Mickey Light, there won't be such deployment would happen during server startup. Instead, the files would be readily available in the web apps folder in loadable format. The other folders that are being changed in this Mickey Light migration is the log files. Earlier, we used to have the log files in Manage Engine, Service Desk, Server, Default Log. And now that's being moved on to the Service Desk Plus logs. And the configuration files will be present under Manage Engine, Service Desk, Server, Default Conf in the old version. But after the migration, we can find that under Manage Engine, Service Desk, Conf. Similarly, all the jar files will be available under Service Desk Plus Server Default Lib and now it will be moved on to Service Desk Plus Lib. So by looking at this folder configuration, we can easily say the maintenance gonna be easier using Mickey Lite. And now we're gonna see what are all the different file changes after this migration. So earlier the root directory was under extracted and now it will be moved on to the web apps root. The root directory is nothing but a location wherein we put in all the web pages and that will be served automatically by the web server. So that's going to be changed and all the required web pages are going to be available under web apps root. The next file change is the deployment descriptor file. Web.xml is a descriptor file wherein it will have the instructions to deploy a particular context. And in the Mickey, it will be available under the extracted folder and now it will be moved under the root folder. And it will be always found under the folder called web and hyphen inf. And then the translation files. So for Having the language support, we have several translation files for each language. And earlier, it was saved under server default lib classes resources. And now it is moved on to lib slash resources. As said, simple to maintain. And then configuration directives. Server.xml is a file wherein we have all settings of the application to use which port and if you are using the secure HTTP protocol, the server.xml is the place wherein you could configure what key store is supposed to use. And the server.xml was present under server default reply earlier and now it has been moved on to manage engine yeah. service desk conf. And then comes the data source files. So the data source files are nothing but the file wherein it will have the connection parameters to establish database connections. So earlier we would be having files called mssql-ds.xml, pgsql-ds.xml present under server default deploy. And now those are all moved into database underscore params.conf. Let's quickly see how that particular file looks like. I'm going under Manage Engine, Service Desk and as discussed under Conf, we have all the configuration files. So I'm opening up the file with say database underscore perhaps.conf and this displays the driver name, the username and the password and the URL to connect to the database and other parameters to connect to the database. 
So earlier it used to be on the file as per the database is chosen and right now it's going to be one single file wherein we have all these values. We would have here done requirement wherein a user wants to connect to the database which is not bundled with the application. Uh, in that case, our application when starting up, it will attempt to start the database as well. So when the database could not be started, it will fail. For that, we suggest users to update a file called nms-service.xml wherein we will have a parameter called start db server and we will set that to false. And that particular configuration is moved under manage engine service test conf and in a file called custom customer-config.xml. So let's quickly go and see how that particular file looks like. So here, it just have the DB name, the adapter which is being used, and then here comes the parameter start DB server. And since I'm using the default database that is bundled with the application, the value is true. And if you want to use this standalone version, it can be set to false and save the file. All right, now let's see what all the internal changes have happened in the application after this upgrade. The first one is thread pool betterment. So the thread handling is made better in Mickey Light, so we can expect some better performance after this upgrade. And the second change have happened is the MySQL support. So the MySQL database is no longer supported in Services Plus. So the users who are all in MySQL should migrate to either Postgres or at the MSSQL database. And the upgrade will not proceed if the user is on MySQL database. And the third change have happened is with the logger. Since JBoss dependency has been completely removed, we have acquired a new log system which is a part of the Tomcat web server. Sometimes when you want to investigate an issue, we would provide a debug patch. With the latest version, those debug patches can be separated into a folder called fixes. And this helps us in better tracking of those patches. Alright, the last change I have on my list is about stopping the application. Earlier, when you stop the application, there would be a message showing up that a command has been posted to the server and the application will stop soon. Right now, that particular message would be written on a file. And the file name contains shutdown with the year and the date and the time at which the shutdown was initiated. And this file can be referred for shutdown related details. Trust us, this upgrade is going to help us bring you new exciting features in Services Plus. So if you do have any queries in specific to this particular upgrade, you can write us to support at servicedesplus.com. Thank you all for listening to this. You all have a great day.